Good evening, everybody. Sorry about that slight technical hitch. Um, welcome to tonight's Fertility Week webinar on alcohol and fertility. I'd like to welcome Dr. Andrew Murray. He's Medical Director of Fertility Associates in Wellington, and he's going to present this important topic for us. If you have any questions, please just type them into the chat box and he will answer them at the end. Thanks. Over to you. Well, hi everyone. Um, greetings from Wellington. So I've been given the topic of talking to you about um, alcohol and fertility and it's um, the impact the alcohol has. Well, if we go back to the basics, there's really three basics you need to get pregnant, the eggs, the sperm, and where they get together. And one of the things that we're trying to focus on with the Fertility Awareness Week is the impact that various lifestyle and environmental things can have on, on the outcome of those vital ingredients, on the quality of those ingredients. So previously I know that there's been talks on age, the timing of intercourse, age, and we're going to hear about smoking in the future, but tonight we're talking about alcohol. So what do we know about alcohol and fertility? Well, it's, it's well established that alcohol can cause birth defects and I'm sure many of you would have heard about the fetal alcohol syndrome. So this is where during pregnancy alcohol can lead to certain, uh, a combination or a cluster of problems that we call fetal alcohol syndrome. So these children will often have behavioral problems, uh, they might have mental impairment, and they have certain facial features, and um, these are shown on this slide. They have quite a characteristic sort of face with quite a, a low uh, nasal bridge, um, quite a small gap between the nose and, and upper lip. And um, the difficulty is that no one really knows what the safe dose, if indeed there is one, um, uh, of alcohol that might expo uh, predispose someone to developing this. Now, if we take it back a step from being pregnant to actually trying to get pregnant, how could alcohol affect a woman's fertility? So we know alcohol in the bloodstream increases the levels of estrogen, which in turn drives down follicle-stimulating hormone, and that's an important hormone for achieving, might even affect ovulation. Even if ovulation happens, there is good evidence now that it may even affect early embryo development, embryo development. and that might be when these um, very early problems occur that may go on to lead to the fetal alcohol syndrome that we just saw. There, um, there seems to be a dose-related effect, so how much is okay? Well, even relatively modest amounts, as little as seven to eight drinks per week, have been shown to be associated with reduced fertility and increased risk of miscarriage. Now, this has been studied by a group in Denmark where they followed a group of women over a couple of years and looked at their alcohol intake and then tracked that back to their chances of conceiving. And what they showed was quite a clear dose-related effect that if you have between one and five drinks per week, Compared to non-drinkers, you are 61% less likely to conceive. Or well, your chance of conceiving was 61% compared to those women. It was even more dramatic in the moderate drinkers of 6 to 10 drinks. And very much an impact if you are a heavy drinker with more than 10 standard drinks per week. Well, it's fair to say even if we look at fertility treatment, uh, again, there's evidence that fetal alcohol consumption results in less eggs at IVF and a higher miscarriage rate. What about the guys? Well, it's a little less clear and it's quite hard to do studies on alcohol consumption because often the research that isolates alcohol as a lifestyle factor does rely on recall. But there is some biological plausibility to it, and clearly we know alcohol can be associated with impotence, reduced libido, and may have an impact on sperm quality. 
very similar to the previous slide, when you increase the estrogen level and decrease the FSH, that means there's less drive to produce testosterone in the testis and consequently sperm quality can reduce. So putting that all together, our, our current evidence is a little bit inconclusive as to what is safe to consume and so certainly for women, both prior and during pregnancy, because it's so difficult to know what the exact safe dose should be, safe dose should be, our recommendation for women is to probably avoid alcohol in, altogether. And certainly for men, although the impact of low to moderate alcohol on male fertility is a little less clear, certainly heavy, heavy drinking should be avoided. So what are our recommendations? Well, as I just said, for women, avoid alcohol while trying to conceive and during pregnancy, and men, let's limit it at least no more than one to two drinks per day. Well, there's not much else to say on this topic. It's really quite a simple recommendation. I'm happy to answer any questions from anyone listening um, on this topic. Right, it doesn't look like we have any questions tonight. So thank you very much for your uh, for your time, Dr. Murray, and for for addressing that topic for us, which is an important part of Fertility Week. Oh, you're most thank welcome, you Nicola. Much. Okay. Good luck Thanks. to everyone listening. Okay. Bye bye. Good night. Oh. Hey. Thanks. Hey, Oh, there's some questions. We do have questions. Yes, we have two questions. Okay. One question. Okay. If my husband, right. Now, am I still live? Yes, you are. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. I was wondering if I typed the answer. So I've got a question. Um, if my husband has a low sperm count, would I recommend no alcohol? Yeah, that's a tough one. I, I think. If it's a particularly low sperm count, you want to do everything you can to improve the situation. And we know that it takes about three months for sperm to sort of uh, go through their production cycle. So a trial of non-drinking may help improve things to a certain degree. Often very low sperm counts aren't going to get you from having a very low sperm count to a normal sperm count just by knocking off the booze. But it's about this whole series of... Um, recommendations that we're making as part of Fertility Awareness Week is about controlling what we can control. And you can certainly choose whether to have a, a drink or not. And even if that's the sort of 5 or 10% level factor that might be making a difference or not to um, your fertility, it's certainly worth a trial in, in your husband's case of trying it two or three months off the booze if you can. So I've got another question um, from Christine. If I consumed alcohol during the two weeks, uh, two WWI, I think that's two weeks before conception, perhaps, would that affect the embryo, or does the baby not take anything from until after implantation? Well, Christine, we don't know, and that's why our recommendation is that even before conception, there is evidence alcohol may have an impact. So I would suggest no no drinking at all. Nikki's asking, is there any difference between drinking spirits versus say beer? No, no difference. It's all alcohol at the end of the day. So um, spirits aren't any worse than beer. It's it's the actual alcohol in those drinks. Oh two W the two week wait. Okay, I got it. Not up with the lingo. So from conception mid cycle to to finding out you're pregnant, there's already huge things going on um, in terms of cell division that alcohol may have an impact on. So that's why we would suggest uh, not drinking at that time. Thanks for that, Jacinta, the, the um, decoding for me. So 
So Jen's asking, is there a benefit to not drinking once I have my period? And is it, it is clear I'm not going to fall pregnant? So I suppose if there is a, a month where you know you and, and you've got a, an engagement to go to, well, that's fine. And look, I must say, if you have the odd drink because it's a wedding or a social occasion or something like that, it's not the end of the world. Don't beat yourselves up about it. The, the fact is that we just don't know the safe minimum dose. I'm pretty certain the odd occasional glass of wine or something along those lines is not going to be a big disaster. But what we're saying is that if alcohol is a regular part of your uh, daily or we weekly routine and you're planning to be pregnant, then the ideal situation is to avoid alcohol. Okay, I think that looks like all the questions now.